Hey, what's up guys? This is Cameron in San Diego, coming back at you with a new video on changing the coolant reservoir on Ram Promaster. Should be for, I believe, 2017 and up. I have here a 1500. This is actually going to be the same for the uh, 2500 and 3500. They're all the same reservoirs. So let's get, and get started on this. I'll flip you around here. So here's our issue on this one is you can see just below the minimum line, I have a crack in this reservoir. And coolant's leaking out of that, and it is at least holding pressure, or holding fluid without pressure in the system, but once it pressurizes, it starts leaking, and being below the minimum line is not ideal for coolant levels. So we're gonna go ahead and change out this reservoir. First thing you're gonna do is obviously pop the hood. You should know how to do that on your RAM. Open your door, it's right on the side of the dashboard. And then we're gonna want to open up the cap. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna relieve any pressure in the system, which is going to help not make any messes when we take the hoses off. So I've already actually taken mine off, there's no pressure. You wanna make sure that uh, the vehicle's not hot, the coolant's not hot, you don't wanna be burning yourself. But little trick, if uh, you recently drove it, it's cooled down, but you haven't opened it yet and you wanna be careful. Just slowly give it a couple little turns like that. And as you go, you can give it little taps on the top and there's a little valve built into the cap. And by doing that little tapping and small turns, that'll actually help relieve that pressure. It'll get to a point where it will, you'll hear it, it'll purge off the pressure and then you'll be good to take it off. Once it's off, the pressure's relieved. You can just put it right back on so the parts we're gonna need, I have here the replacement Dorman part. Comes with little caps. We'll actually reuse these caps for the old reservoir as we take it off. Just another way to keep things tidy. I got my funnel. Let's see here, we got a part number. So the Dorman 603832 is going to be your part for these ProMasters. And then there's coolant there. We'll see if we'll have to use it. The level's pretty full on this one, and I should be able to save this coolant. Uh, if your level's lower, you might have to top off the coolant. But uh, for starters, I got my impact driver here. I have a 5 16 bit on it. And... The extension itself is a quarter drive, so both of those are going to be used. This bigger clamp is going to be used with that 5 16. I have my nut driver on, and then the smaller clamp is going to be a quarter. So these clamps here are just one time use from the factory, so you're going to have two of those small clamps to replace, and on the bottom side, we'll be able to see it better later on. Let's see if I can get it here though. You can kind of see the elbowing up there. So that one's gonna be the bigger clamp. So it's only three clamps we're gonna need. And the other tools we're gonna to use, I have a flat head that helps with uh, getting these factory clamps off. I have my bull nose dikes, and I have a pick. Between those three should make it pretty easy to get the clamps off. Then I have here a 13 millimeter, just have it on a impact uh, adapter. And that's gonna go to the bolt down here that mounts the reservoir. And lastly, I got a four pack of these um, hose clamps for, uh, from Harbor Freight. So we're gonna use the three smallest sizes and we don't need to use the largest one. The two small ones, obviously two small hoses and then the bigger hose will be using that bigger size. So, first thing first, we're gonna remove the clamps from these top ones. Before we do that though, we're gonna wanna kinda find the end of where the plastic nipple is, and you wanna be a little, give it a little extra space. So somewhere right around that elbow on both of those, we're gonna take these clamps and we'll tighten them down onto that. I'll show you with one real quick. It's the same process for the other. All right. So loosened it up, just get it where the hose fits in there, and then you just tighten that knob down, 
And once that hose is flattened out, then uh, you'll be good. There won't be any fluid being able to pass through. And what, what the point of this is, is that when we take these hoses off, anything that might be in the line, any pressure, uh, just keeps this from leaking. The reservoir itself shouldn't really leak. Uh, gravity's gonna keep it all within the bottom section. The bottom one will be a little, uh, little bit trickier, but it's, uh, I'll show you how that is when we get to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these both down, and then I'll get back to you on removing these clamps, the factory crimp-on clamps. All right, so I got both these clamps down on these hoses. You just tighten them down until um, kind of doesn't really want to thread anymore. You don't have to go crazy on it, just where it kind of feels like you got resistance and it's clamping down uh, pretty decent. So now we're going to go ahead and take off these clamps on the top. And where it's crimped, let's see here, you can see where I'm pointing. So you can kind of see the end of the crimp right there, and we're just going to try to pry that away. So I'm going to start with my bullnose dykes. I like to try to use these guys first. And I get and just kind of get it right over it right there, give it a little squeeze, and then I pry backwards. Essentially just trying to get that part that's crimped over to straighten out. Remember, we're not reusing this, we're not reusing the reservoir, so you don't have to be the most careful with it. If it breaks, it's trash anyway, so no biggie on it. Just gotta pry at it, try and straighten that clamp out to get it off. And truly right here, uh, once it's loose like that, that's fine. Once you pull the hose off, it'll come off. But. I'll just show you. All right, so I got it to this point that I'm able to just pull it right off. And there we go. So now that clamps off, we're gonna do the exact same thing to this other one. So I'll get and do that and we'll get back with, next step is gonna be unscrewing the reservoir. So we'll take that bolt out. All right, so now, once you get both of those clamps off, then and take my 13 millimeter on my impact and we're just going to come right in here unscrew that guy now i'm using this area up in the cowl to kind of store stuff just be careful you see where this hose thing right here is it's a little drainage port for it and there's a hole there so just make sure anything small isn't anywhere between the wiper blade and your washer sprayer Try to keep stuff more over on this end, uh, and it won't be able to fall through there. Once you get to the other side of the washer blade, uh, you can use this area too. Just careful of this section with that hole. So I'm just going to set this bolt up here. And next part, I didn't show you, but I actually threw some cardboard down on the ground below the van. That way, if anything, there shouldn't be much of anything that comes out. But if it does, it'll land on the cardboard. Just keep your area tidy, especially if you're uh, not in a shop. We can pull these off. Let's go ahead and just take these caps off of our new reservoir. And we'll just go ahead and reuse these guys. I'll just set those right there. But, uh, Work these off. Sometimes you gotta give it a little wiggle and a twist. If it's really fighting you, just get a pair of normal, uh, like channel lock type pliers and uh, just bite down on that. Give a little twist. Careful not to do it too tightly. You don't wanna tear into the hose. But, uh, I should be able to get these off if I use my other hand. So let me pull those off real quick and get right back. All right, so I got those hoses off. Just kind of set them to the side. When I pulled them off, it did squirt a little coolant out. Just the little residual of what was at the tip there. Keep a little rag on you, wipe it up. Didn't make much of a mess, but throw those caps on. And then when the reservoir is in the upright position, just kind of pull it up. It's got uh, two little mounts that go into rubber grommets. 
they just pull up out of there. So pull it up and then kind of set it on its side where you have those fittings sticking up. And now you have access to this guy right here. So we're gonna go ahead and throw our uh, little hose clamp um, to keep it from leaking on that bottom one. And then we'll remove that clamp. It's done uh, basically just like the other ones. So let's go ahead and pull those off. Okay, so once you get to this point, we got that clamped down here, removed that clamp, actually used my flathead for it. So where that bulkhead is, just kind of went in between with the flathead, give a little twist, pry it off, you know, pry it away. Once again, just make sure not to damage the hose itself. The clamp and the reservoir are trash, so have at it with that. This next part I am going to have to use two hands for, so I can't totally show you. But basic idea is that this hose is going to stay because it's uh, you know, still on and secured. And obviously once we pull that off, the fluid in the reservoir is want to, going to want to come out. So we want to actually, when we pull it, make the bottom side the top side. So I'm going to grab it in a way, probably about right here and maybe on this arm with the other hand. And I'm basically going to pull up and... I'm just going to actually be holding the reservoir, and I'm going to allow the uh, the hose, the way it's routed in here, it'll kind of bind up uh, where when I pull it, um, it's not going to pull off the other end or anything like that, so it'll hold itself. And by doing that, we're basically trying to rotate this upward, and when we do that, the hose will pull off, and if you're quick and slick about it, then uh, really shouldn't make any mess and then the reservoir is going to be sitting upside down um, by having these uh, back on it'll help prevent it from leaking your caps on so it's fine to flip it upside down and then uh, when we go to install the new um, reservoir we'll just pour this fluid into the new reservoir so i'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and we'll get right back to it all right so i just pulled it off actually see there is, I might not be able to see, but there is a little tiny bit of coolant uh, in that tube up to where that clamp is. And the angle that I have this at th this point is good enough that uh, the fluid actually stays in the reservoir. So once you have it there, you can pull it up, try to keep that upright. And I'm just gonna set it inside the cardboard box that the new one came in. So the old one is just going to sit in the box upside down like that until we're ready to pour it back into the new reservoir. So from this point, it's uh, really just assembly. The little bit of coolant that was left in this shouldn't actually spill out as long as you keep this upright. So we're going to get and grab our new reservoir. And we'll pull this cap off and may as well just toss it on here. Extra, extra safe to not spill. So we're gonna take our new clamp and this guy, make sure that you slip it onto the hose before we install. And position it in a way that you know you'll be able to uh, get at the uh, head of it to be able to tighten it down. So I have mine positioned where it's facing me. So I'm just going to take this new reservoir and I'm going to put that, slide that on and I'll tighten that clamp down. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I don't think I really need to totally show you that. So I'll, I'll tighten that clamp down and then I'll be able to remove the uh, clamp that's keeping the fluid retained. Uh, the trick with these worm clamps is these little slits that you see, you know you're tight enough when you start seeing the rubber uh, bulge through those openings. So when it feels tight and you start seeing uh, rubber kind of bulge through there, then that's uh, pretty good. Um, it's just plastic. However, they do sleeve it with metal, which is really nice so that you're not cracking it. Um, but you do still run the risk of cracking the plastic if you go too tight. So just be careful with it. All right, so I got that clamp tightened down on there. Took off the hose clamp that's keeping it from spilling. A couple little things. There's gonna be that notch in the rubber hose. 
that's actually going to go up where the notch of the plastic is. So get that up tight and you'll see the two white lines. Just center your clamp right between those and you'll see this is as tight as you really want to get it. You'll see the clamp is kind of squeeze in there. You kind of see the rubber pushing out on the sides and then a little bit of uh, push out, a little squeeze out on that rubber in between there. So from there, that part's good to go. We're gonna take it back upright, get those two feet in those rubber grommets, and then we can throw that screw back in. So just kind of get that started by hand. Finger tight. One well, doesn't even need to be finger tight. Just get it started where you know you got good threads. Switch out my adapter. Put that 13 millimeter back on. give it a couple of impacts. It's no real torque spec for it that I know of. It's pretty basic. Uh, I use setting two on my impacts and just kind of tighten it down, give it a couple impacts. So that's back on there solid. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to take these other two small clamps that we have and we can start with the back one. Put the clamp on your hose first. And the good thing about that little hose tool there is it keeps it from sliding all the way down so you don't lose track of it. So we're just going to slide that hose back on, push it all the way to the end of where that little stopper is. Do the same thing with the second one. Oh, make sure I get the clamp on before I do that. And I'm positioning these clamps. I always do it so it faces me. So they have that facing you. Slide that on. There's a little notch right there. Push the hose in. And just go ahead and tighten those two down. And then we can remove the uh, red clamps. All right, as you can see, I got these two small clamps tightened down. Took off the red hose clamps. And with these, be careful that uh, when you're tightening it down, you don't want to really have it uh, twisting side to side and risking breaking this guy off. Uh, if you need to, you can always put one hand and kind of reinforce on this side to keep it from flexing either way while you tighten that down. Um, and then same thing again with these white lines, just center it in there. And at this point, it's basically done. We're gonna pull the cap off refill the fluid and everything that was in the lines is still in there the rest of the system still good uh, we really haven't introduced much of any air to the system so we're gonna go ahead and take our old reservoir I'll put a funnel in here and I'll pour that coolant that was in the old reservoir uh, hasn't been exposed to anything it's just sitting inside the other reservoir it's fine to do that um, pour it in here if it's not full all the way we'll top this off and then the last thing you're going to want to do is start the van up and leave this cap off. Uh, you can leave the funnel in it, it's fine. Um, but you want to make sure the cap is off, turn it on. You're going to turn your heater on to max. And I always do just the forward facing vent, it's easiest to feel. Um, let your engine get up to temperature, watch your temperature water gauge. And uh, with these it's dead center is where uh, operating temperature is. So once it's to that, uh, you're going to go inside the van, give it some revs, you can hold it at like 2,000 RPMs, uh, like 30 seconds at a time if you want. Uh, give it a couple quick uh, rev ups, that uh, a lot of times helps push out the stubborn bubbles, but uh, once your temperature gauge shows that it's at normal operating temperature and you're getting nice hot air out of your heater uh, or your vents, you know that the air is bled out. If there's air in the system, when the heat is on, you're gonna have it blow cold, or it'll start to get hot, and then it'll get cold, and then it'll get hot again, and that's air bubbles in the system. So when, re uh, when revving the engine, if you put your hand right in front of the vent, it should be pretty darn scalding. Not totally scalding, but it should be uncomfortable to hold it for more than a minute, uh, 30 seconds to a minute. And at that point, you know, all the air's bled out and then you're going to, before you turn it off, make sure you put the cap back on because 
all of that heat and pressure is going to want to push out if you turn it off. Uh, so make sure that cap goes on before you turn it off. And um, once the cap's back on, fluid's topped off, air's bled out, you can turn the van off and the job's done. Uh, take it for a test drive if you want, uh, just to make sure that it's good. And uh, make sure you're not overheating. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple job. All right, one last thing before we end this video. Uh, you'll see that actually I'm just about all the way to max. I've already emptied my coolant reservoir, but let me show you what I did. So here's the trick I use is have your funnel there and take your reservoir, make sure caps all the way on still. And you're just gonna go ahead and kind of position the legs to the sides of your funnel so that that bottom part is over your funnel. Taking your other hand, you're gonna go ahead and carefully pull off that cap. Coolant's gonna start coming out. Try to be uh, quick with the cap so your hand's not under it. Um, if your hand's under it, it's gonna wanna go down your hand and splash. So just make it real quick, pull the cap off, get your hand and cap out of the way, and it'll somewhat slowly start coming out of there. And as it does, uh, you have a good hold of the reservoir here over the funnel. You can go ahead and start loosening up the cap. Don't take it off all the way. That way uh, you can always, just in case, close it back up. Uh, for whatever reason, if uh, funnel falls or something like that, uh, helps you not make too big of a mess. So, just slowly open up that cap, and when you do, then the flow of this will uh, pick up, and just let pour out whatever does come out, and there's still a little left in the reservoir. I'm not gonna try to get every little bit out. That little bit that's left is just gonna cause a mess anyway if I try getting all of it out. So I was actually able to get this just about full. I'm gonna take my uh, coolant that's in the bottle and top that off. Doesn't need very much more, it's basically there. And then uh, I'll go ahead and do that bleeding process of the air like I was telling you about. Starting it up, turning the heater on. And then uh, once it's blowing nice and hot at operating temperature, Throw that cap on and job done. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys and uh, showing you how to change out this reservoir. Pretty easy job. It's gonna be uh, pretty tidy uh, with a couple little trip tricks. Uh, if you like the video, feel free to give that a thumbs up. Torn around to my gloves during the process, so thumbs up on the video if it was helpful for you, if you liked it. Uh, if you want to subscribe, there'll be more videos coming on these Rams. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.